says. Now this very lengthy ayah, it gives final rules and regulations about the fasting in Islam. Because you know previously in the former Muslim Ummah, there was no sehri, no eating or drinking after you one said your night prayer, for example after Isha, no eating, nothing of the sort, till the, the next Maghrib, when you know night starts again. So the, the fast covered the night as well as the day. Only for a little time between Maghrib and Isha you could, you could eat and drink and nothing else. Here this now fasting has been reduced to only the daytime, from the dawn to the sunset. So this is another, in this. then there was no sexual intercourse also permitted during the fasting. Because the night was also included in the fast, so there could be no sexual intercourse between the husband and the wife. So these things were there in uh, the as practices among the Jews. And the Muslims of Medina, they were seen that the psalm in the Jews has these additional limitations. So they thought that they are included in Islamic laws also. Although there was no mention of it before in the Quran, either to the contrary or confirming those regulations. But some people thought that it is not lawful, it is not permissible to have sexual intercourse with their wives. But still, they were doing it. So in a way, they were betraying themselves. They were doing khayana with their own selves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it first in this ayah. And then, you know, given the final rules, that this is the difference between the psalm of Islam and the psalm of the Jews of the previous ummah. It has been made, declared lawful for you to have sexual contact with your wives during the nights of the of the fasting. The fasting is for the day, not for the night. Hunna libasul lakum antum libasul lahun. They are like a covering because just as the dress, they are like dress to you, and you are like dress to them. This this dress covers our body. So actually, the intimacy between the dress and the body, so that has been referred to by this simile. They are like are like dress to you, and you are like the dress to them. Hunna libasul lakum, antum libasul lahunna. So this close affinity and proximity. Alam Allahu annakum kuntum takhtarun anfusakum. It's in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa taala that that you were committing khayana with yourselves. You were betraying yourselves. You thought that this sexual intercourse is contrary to this psalm, and still you were doing it. Only a few much might have been doing it, but Allah subhanahu wa taala, you know, mentions it because with reference to that, He is now giving the final. Rules about the psalm in Islam. Fataba alaykum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your tawba. He has relented towards you. He is lenient towards you. And he has forgiven you. You have done a mistake, committed a mistake. You shouldn't have done this. Although you didn't know, didn't know it for sure that it is haram. But you thought that it is haram and still you are, you are doing it. So actually you are betraying yourself. You are doing khayana, dishonesty with your own self. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has relented towards you and he has accepted your, your tawbah and he has forgiven you. Fal'ana bashiru hunna. Now you can have contact with them. Wabtahu ma katab Allahu lakum. And now you want to, you, you try to get what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. Now this sexual intercourse, the result is offspring, the result is taskeen, let us kanu ilaha, everything that is contained in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not gone into details. But whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you, in this contact between the spouses, you can get it, you can have it. Wabtahu ma katab Allahu lakum. Fal'ana basharu hunna, wabtahu ma katab Allahu lakum. Wakulu wa shrabu hatta yatabayyana lakum al khaytul abyadu min al khaytul aswadi min al fadr. And you can keep on eating and drinking till the white thread of the morning of the dawn becomes evident to you from the black thread of the night. This is again, you know, an expression for the dawn when that whiteness appeared on the horizon. 
it's like a thread which is separating darkness from the from the this thread you know it is separating the horizon when the white thread of hatta yatabayyana ko khaydul abyad min al khayt al aswad min al fajr white thread of the dawn become evident to you from the black thread of the night summa timu siyam ila al layl now when dawn has appeared stop eating stop drinking now till the setting of sun setting till the coming of the night you have to complete this song now all the restrictions are there no eating no drinking no sexual contact nothing of the sort all things prohibited wala tu ba shuru hunna wa antum aqifuna fil masajid an additional limitation and that is when you are more taqif what is the itikaf to con to confine yourself to the limits of a masjid an area but not the whole of masjid where really prayers are held because there are additional things amenities they are not included in this in the definition of masjid masjid is only the place where people really bow and prostrate and where they offer their prayers so you restrict yourself cut off from the other worldly your routine activities and now you are absolutely with allah subhanahu wa taala remembering him praying him reading quran doing whatever he has commanded to do so all these things you can do but you know you can't go out of this limits of the mosque except when there is real need if you have to call to the to respond to the call of the nature you can go to the bathroom the washroom that's all but otherwise you cannot go out so when you are mutaqif in the masajid wa antum aqifuna fil masajid then you cannot have any sexual contact with your wives even during the nights of the song these are for the 10 days you know the masnoon etikaf the last 10 days after the night of the 21st begins you know this is the beginning of etikaf masnoon etikaf nafal etikaf voluntary etikaf can be for smaller period can be at any time during any month any day but you know this masnoon etikaf which was the practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is last 10 days of every month of ramadan wan tum aqifuna fil masajid tilka hududullah these are the limitations laid down by allah subhanahu wa taala fala taqrabuha very beautiful don't go near them at certain places in quran there is la taqtaduha don't transgress the limits of allah subhanahu wa taala transgressing you go out from the limits it's something else don't go near them keep at a safe distance if yes you are if you are very near to it then it's just possible that you can just cross it maybe unknowingly you have crossed the limits because you are very near to the final limits so keep at a safe distance from the limits that allah subhanahu wa taala has laid down tilka hududullah fala taqrabuha these are the limitations laid by allah subhanahu wa taala so don't go near them keep yourself at a safe, safe distance from them kazalika yubayyinu llahu ayatihi lil nas la'allahum yattaqun in this way allah subhanahu wa taala explains his, his ayat all his commandments are being explained everything which was doubtful about this this ibadah this mode of worship of saum now it has been cleared all the things have been explained kazalika yubayyinu llahu ayatihi lil nas in this manner allah subhanahu wa taala makes his commands his ayat clear for the people la'allahum yattaqun so that they can be saved they don't transgress the laws they don't transgress the the hudud of allah the limitations of allah unknowingly so allah subhanahu wa taala has made everything clear and plain wala taakulu amwalakum bainakum bil baatil and don't eat up one others one another's property and wealth bil baatil on two false methods illegal methods unlawful methods this can be in many ways stealing you have stolen some property of somebody else it is illegal if he gives you himself in gift you can take it you can use it if he has gifted it to you if he has given you some present you can take it you can use it but if you have stolen it that it is haram for you it is impermissible it is it is not 
lawful for you to use it. Stealing. In the same way, now a particular case is being given here. But to do behind and hook on. Latakulum, Walakum, Bedakum, Bilbatin. Don't eat up one another's property and wealth through illegal means, through illegal methods. And don't present your property and your wealth to the rulers. Latakulu, Farika, Minamwal, and Das with the intention. That you eat up some part of the people's property will issue with sin unjustly. One tum talamun and you do it knowingly. This is the rishwa. This is you know with a word that you present to the people bribery. You present your money to the judge or to the authority, someone who can do some favor to you. Whatever favor he is doing to you, if he is a government official. It is at the cost of the interest of the government, and if there is some dispute, some case in the in, in the court of a judge, and you have pleased that judge through bribery, well, he will do you favor, and he will do wrong to the other party. So you are eating the property and the wealth of the other party by giving your wealth to the judge, to the authority, to the person who is sitting in judgment on that matter. So don't do it. This is called bribery, and actually the hadith are Rashi wal Murtashi kila huma fil nar. Rashi means the person who gives bribe. Generally, we think that Rashi is the person who is accepting bribe and who is eating bribe. On the contrary, in Arabic language, the Rashi is the person who is giving bribe, and Murtashi is the person who is accepting bribe. So Rashi is more important. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has first mentioned Rashi, the person who is who is presenting and who is offering bribe is Rashi. And here in the Quran also we are finding that the mention is made, being made of the people who are giving bribe. Now to the lube ha ilal hukam, don't give your mal, your property, your wealth to the rulers in order that you may eat up and you may usurp the property or wealth of other people. Will issue unjustly, and antum talabul, and you might be knowing it. Will fully doing it, then it is haram for you. Now, what is the logical relationship of this ayah with this section? The section started with taqwa. Kotiba alaykum usiyam kama kotiba al nazira min kabli kum laal lakum tattaqoon. What is the criterion for taqwa? The criterion for taqwa is if you are eating halal, you are muttaqi. If you are eating haram, you are not muttaqi. You may be very pious, apparently. You may be, may be worshiping, you know, not five prayers a day, but ten prayers a day. But if you are eating haram, you are not at all muttaqi. The real criterion of taqwa is that you must eat and you must earn through halal means and not through haram means. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim.